لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماءه العادون ولا يودي حقه المجتهدون والحمد لله على رسول المصدد المحمود الأحمد بالقاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المأسومين الذين أغب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه تبارك وتعالى في كتاب المجيد والفرقان الحميد وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور صلاته اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد. We are gathered here to remember my late father. It's hard for me to say that. Marhum Hassan Ali Muhammad Jaffa. He was a father. He was a grandfather. He was a great grandfather. He was an uncle, a grand uncle, a community leader, and much more. When human beings come into this society, they form so many relationships over time. I have done many Isale Sawab Majalises over the years for many, many people. I never in my wildest dreams ever thought that a day will come that I will have to do it for my father. It is hard to believe as I came in today and I expected to find him, he was not there. But that's what Allah wills and whatever Allah wills we have to accept it. Therefore, first of all, on behalf of myself, of my, uh, my mother, my uncles, my brothers and sisters would like to extend a heartfelt thanks to all the community members, starting from Dr. Hussein, who showed up right away at the hospital, to all the volunteers, the Mayat committee, and many, many others that you know better than I do what you have done over the years. My dad loved all of you, loved the community, as you all know spent a lifetime of, of his in, in the community and would worry about every aspect of it to make sure that we move forward as a community. And I'd like to say thank you to all of you for uh, having done whatever you did. May Allah bless you and grant you barakat in your affairs and accept all your deeds that you have done for him and for all the others that you do on a regular basis. As you know, my dad worked in the community for over 70, 80, 70 years or so, even more. And in that process, he may have hurt you unwittingly. He never intended to hurt anybody, as far as I recall. And if he did that, I ask your forgiveness. Yesterday, you say, when you pray namaz salatul mayyab, he says, Allahumma inna la na'lamu minhu illa khayr. Right? Oh Allah, I know nothing about him except good. And the philosophy of that is that when somebody passes away and you stand up and say that, Allahumma inna la na'lamu minhu illa khayra, that Ya Allah, despite what I know about him, I am willing to forgive him. You are Ghafoor Rahim. If I can forgive and I know what it is done to me, then will you not forgive? So that is the philosophy of that, uh, that sentence that we say in Salatul uh, Mayat, when we do that on a, uh, whenever somebody passes away. So I ask that if he has uh, wronged you, that you forgive him, for he needs your du'as now. And if he has touched you in any positive way, that you remember him with the Surah Fatiha every time you, you remember him. And may Allah grant him maghfira in the Ali Darajat, inshallah, amongst the Masumin alayhi salam. And may this community move forward to realize his dream that this community has the potential to move as far as it possibly can. Oh. 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 In Risalatul Hukuk, Imam Zainul Abidin says, and I don't want to belabor the point, but he says, he talks about the rights of your father. He says in that, that the right of your father is you know that he is your root. Without him, you would not be. Whenever you see anything in yourself which pleases you, Know that your father is the root of its blessing upon you. So praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank him in that measure 
and there is no strength and power except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything good that we see within ourselves, the root is our fathers. We must never forget that aspect of him. And today I stand uh, uh, as a monument to this one, this, this uh, hadith uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the Imam, that any good that I may have done, any good that I may have done, any action that I might have done, my role model has always been my dad. It's always been my dad and I looked up to him and how he handled himself over the years and how he did that and tried and take whatever lessons that I could to try and pass, do the same out to the, the community out there. So this is something that you all know that when Imam Zaman alayhi salam, when he was in Raybat al Suhara, he appointed four naib. These were four Nawab al Khas, right? These were the four ones. The first one was Abu Amr Uthman bin Said al Amri, then his son was appointed, then Hussein bin Ra, and the last one was Muhammad al Thamari. <coughs> when Abu Amr Uthman bin Said al Amri passed away, Imam writes him a letter of condolences. He writes him a letter of condolences before appointing him as the second night. And in that letter, he says that may Allah have mercy on him, your father, and count him amongst his servants, the Imams. He was always engrossed in their work. He always strove unceasingly in those words which elevated him in front of Allah and helped him gain proximity to the Imam. May Allah make him happy and forgive his sins. May Allah increase your rewards and accept your difficulties. Now watch these words. You are grief stricken, so are we. Imam is saying you have lost your father, but so he feels that I have lost someone also. His death has affected us as much as it has affected you. May Allah make him happier in that life. It was due to his sincerity and decency that he was honored with a son like you who has become his heir and successor. This is the Imam bearing witness on the character of Abu, Ab Abu Amr Uthman bin Said al Amri and, and also bearing witness on the character of his son Muhammad bin Uthman al Said al Amri. So when the Imam gives you that, uh, that uh, basically uh, stamp of approval, what more do one want? And that is what we all strive for. The ayat that I read to you in the beginning is from Surah Al-Mulk, the first two ayats, which Allah says, تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكُ وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And then, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورِ It is he who created death and then life, so that he may try amongst us to see which of us is best indeed, and he is the exalted in might of forgiving. The operative words that we want to focus for the few minutes that we have left together is Ayyukum Ahsanu Amala. That what is this best of deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about? First of all, the system that Allah has put in place for us to live forever is that we have to die. There is no other system in place. We have to go if we want to live permanently. As difficult as it to pass through this world, this world is only a temporary. 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, maybe, and then you are gone. You have to go if you want to live in the future. And this is, that is the system that Allah has put in place. So the question that comes to ayyukum ahsanu amala, that the, so that he may know who amongst you is the best in deeds. The question comes, doesn't Allah already know? Why put us through all this hassle? Why put us through all these actions and all that and to make sure show that the, doesn't he already know? Of course he knows. Of course he knows. But if he passes judgment upon us prior to us acting it out, then it is contrary to his justice. Allah would not do that. So that when we perform and when the judgment is passed, maybe Allah does not have to pass the judgment, our limbs will pass the judgment itself. So the important thing up here is that Allah already knows. And the simple example is, when I teach a madrasa class, within three weeks, I can tell you from my class of 20, 25, 30 students, who is going to be first, 
who is going to be second, and who is going to be last. Right? Just on the basis of having them once a week, I can tell you. Right? If I can tell you that, Allah doesn't know. Of course Allah knows. Allah knows very well out there, but this is, as I mentioned, it is contrary to His justice. The important thing to bear in mind is that when we come through this world and pass through it, everybody comes with a bit of, with potential to be the best that they can be. Will we live up to that potential or will we not? That's the choice that we have. Will we live up to our potential or we will we not? That is something that we have to decide, uh, or are we just passing our time? So what is the yardstick of measuring good deeds? If a person is blessed with a lot of wealth, he is blessed with a lot of good genes, both from his father both and from his mother, and he does a lot of good, is he better than somebody who is not, who is not blessed with those things? Somebody who is very wealthy and is extremely generous at the same time. Does he get more or what? How does that system work out there? Imam Muhammad al-Baqir alayhi salam. He talks about this and he says that it does not mean that one whose deeds are plentiful, rather it means that he is rightful of conduct and his righteousness is nothing but having taqwa. In other words, whatever he does, it is with Allah in his mind all the time. That he is aware of Allah. What is taqwa after all? Taqwa means the being aware of Allah at all times. Not only at certain times, at all times. Anything that you do that is uh, the, the, the keeping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the back of your mind, that would be considered as taqwa. And then Imam goes on and he says to persevere in an action until it becomes sincere is more difficult than performing the action itself. So the two things are important. One, that you do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two, that you do it with sincerity. Let us look at an example, just to give you a, a flavor for what it means. Let's say when this masjid was being built and donations were being asked. right? So everybody gave donations and everybody fine and now there is about certain amount of X amount of dollars or shillings or whatever it is that is left over. And the announcement comes from the president or the mukhi or the secretary that we really need certain amount of money that we want to finish this off and clear off the debt, right? So there is a few friends that we sit together and he says, okay, come on. We can help out and let's do this one. So we give out, say, <coughs> 10, 10, 10, 10, dollars each. Now, in every group of friends, there is always one wise guy. Yeah? There is always one wise guy who always has to have the last word. So in that group of friends, five of us, there is somebody that, here I am, I come along and I talk to the other person and say, hey, what's wrong with you? Such a cheap skate you are, what's wrong with you? $10,000 only, come on. You can do much more than that. Why don't you do 100000 You can do much more than that. Now, what I don't know, what the rest of the friends don't know, what the community doesn't know is that that person has already given a hundred thousand dollars before. He did it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did it and forgot about it. Even when he gave, he says as Bandir Khuda and he didn't even want to know. It came in anonymously, totally. Right? Now the temptation for him to say, who is the cheapskate? You are talking about ten thousand, I have already given a hundred and I am giving a ten extra. Who is the cheapskate? Eh? The, the temptation is very high. The temptation is very, very high to call, to reply and rebut those uh, accusations from a group of friends. But no, this is where the test comes. Now you have to keep quiet and take the brunt of all that attacks that you are getting from there because you did it for Allah's sake. You did it for Allah's sake and you don't want anybody else. As Imam Ali Salam says, give with the right so that the left does not know. Right? Same idea. You want to make sure that you are sincere at all times. If you are sincere, then Allah will accept them. A person comes to Imam Jafar al Sadiq alayhi salam. He comes to him and says, Mawla, I am not a good Shia. When I compare my actions with the actions of all your other ashab, I find that they have far more salat than they perform, 
far more charity that they do, far more fasting that they do, far more khairat and all the other actions that they do, they do far more than I do. What are my chances? Imam says, you are right. They have far more than you. No doubt about it. But the difference between you and them is that when the doors of Ma'asiyah are open, the doors of sin are open, they walk right through it. While you don't have a lot, but when the doors of Ma'asiyah are open to you, you hesitate, you are afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the question here is, debit and credit, right? If you can't do a lot of good, make sure you don't do a lot of evil. Right? Who is rich? Now just ponder this for a moment. Who is rich? A person who earns a million dollars and a person who, uh, as compared to a person who earns fifty thousand dollars. Who is rich? We will all say, what? This, that's an example. What example are you giving, right? But just go along with me for a few minutes here. Yeah? The person who earns a million dollars might have a good standard of living. Might have a very good standard of living because he can afford all the luxuries of life. But if he spends, if he earns a million and spends 1.1, as compared to the one who earns 50,000 and spends 20 and saves 30, in five years this man will be in half a million dollar debt, this man will have $150,000 in his account. Now who is rich? You see? So the important thing up here to bear in mind is if there is not a lot of good you can do, make sure that you do very little evil. The Prophet wasallam says, <laughs> When you perform an action, then perform it sincerely for Allah only, for He does not accept actions from His servants except what was done sincerely. Make your heart sincere and a minimum amount of deeds will suffice for you. It is all about quality, not quantity. It's all about your quality. How much you can do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this one more example and then we will wind up up here. I don't have any more time left. When we go for Hajj or Ziyarat or so, what is our intention? What is our niyyah? Let's say we are going for Hajj. Well, I am going for Hajj because all my friends are going. So, let's go for Hajj. Or, I am going for Hajj because I have been to Mexico, I have been to Bahamas, I have been to Dubai, I have been to Australia, I have been to almost every exotic place that you can think of. Now there is no place to go, so let's go for Hajj. Or, my son or my daughter is getting married, and we are all businessmen, so uh, somebody told uh, me that, you know, when you are preparing for the wedding also, if you go to Medina behind the Haram, there is a bazaar, there is a goldsmith bazaar, they have really good choice of jewelry up there, and therefore, you know, kill two birds with one stone. Go for hat and get your jewelry shopping done also at the same time. Or is it that I am tired of my wife nagging me day in, day out, money jaso, kale sujawab de so Cannot take this anymore. So finally to shut her up, say, okay, let's go for Hajj. Finally this will keep her quiet for another 25 years. Right? Is that the reason? Or is it that I am going because Allah has asked me that it is wajib upon me and he has blessed me, so he says go for Hajj. Alas, no other reason. No other. If other things fall into place, then we are fine. There's nothing wrong. Remember, we are talking about the spiritual level. We are not talking about mundane levels, okay? We are talking about a higher level now. You won't believe it. But years ago, I was doing a Hajj seminar. And I pondered all these questions and a few more as to why somebody is going for Hajj. And somebody afterwards came to me and says, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I came for this seminar, at least now I have four months in which to refocus my niyyah and refocus as to why I was going for Hajj. I was going to Hajj for that last reason, I couldn't take all the nagging from my wife anymore. So that was why I was decided to go for Hajj. Right? So what is it that we are doing? Or I am going for Ziyara, why am I going for Ziyara? Whether I am going to Imam Hussain, Imam Ali, Bibi Zainab, wherever I am going, why I am going? Right? Is it that Mawla, you deserve to be visited? That is why I am here and no other reason. 
And you deserve to be visited. Yeah? You are the one who has sacrificed everything for us, therefore you deserve to be visited. If I had the means and the ability, I would come three times a year, every year for the rest of my life. But that is why I'm here and for no other reason, Mola, I don't want anything from you. Except your Shafa on the day of Maya. What is our intention? That is something that we really need to ask ourselves in everything that we do going forward. If we do that, then that every action that we perform will have a value and may Allah will have to probably accept all of that and we will have Ali Darajat inshallah. If you look at Karbala and you see the actions of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, all and all is ashab, you will find that the level of sincerity was uh, apparent, clear all along, all along the way. They were doing everything they did for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hamid bin Muslim bayan karta hai ke roze ashur mein jab larai shuru hui, jang shuru hui to mein nazdik gaya Hussain ke saam. Jaysay marhale badte rahe to mein ne dekha Hussain ka ka chehra noor jaysa buland bada. जैसे मरहले बढ़ते जाते थे ऐसा हुसैन का चेहरा नूर से आली हो रहा था मैंने कहा ये अजीब इंसान है कि क्या हो रहा है यहां बस जैसे तकलीफें बढ़ती गई जब लड़ाई में कोई गिरा तो इमाम इनके पास गए और कुछ कहा जब जब होर गिरे तो इमाम गए मदद कर लिए और कहा ए होर हुसैन शर्मिंदा है حسین شرمندہ ہے کہ تو ایسے وقت پہ آیا کہ ہم تیری مہمان یہ بھی نہ کر سکے ہمارے پاس کچھ نہیں تھا نہ پانی کی سبیل تھی نہ کھانا تھا اے ہور ہم تو آل محمد ہے ہم نواز ہیں لیکن تیرے لئے کچھ نہیں تھا ہم شرمندہ ہیں جب حبیب گرے تو امام نے کہا انت رجل فقیح اے حبیب تو عالی عالم تھا تو میرا قرآن دوست تھا حبیب تیرے جانے سے میرے بہت مجھے بہت سرما ہوا جب سعید گرا جب جون گرا امام نے کچھ نہ کچھ کہا جب قاسم کی لاش پامال ہو گئی امام گئے وہاں اور کہا اے بیٹا تیرا چچا بچر مندہ ہے کہ نہیں پہنچ سکے تیرے پاس جب اکبر گرے جب اکبر گرے گرے تو امام نے کہا عالم دنیا بعد اکل آفا بیٹے تیرے بات تیرے رہنے جینے کے فائدہ کیا ہے جب عباس گرے تو امام نے کمر پکڑی اور کہا الہار ان کا تردہری وقل لچاہی لچی وہ بھائی تیرے جانے سے میری کمر ٹوٹ گئی جب اسکر کی گلے پہ گئے تیر لگا تب اسکر کے گلے میں تیر لگا تو امام کے پاس کچھ الفاظ نہیں رہے باقی بس سات مرتبہ یہاں سے وہاں گئے اِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ رِضَمْ بِقَضَاهِ وَتَسْلِيمًا بِعَمْرِهِ اِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ رِضَمْ بِقَضَاهِ وَتَسْلِيمًا بِعَمْرِهِ اور خیمے میں آئے اور کہا اے رباب آؤ تیری امانت کو لے لو جب رباب نے یہ بچے کو دیکھا تو کہا امیتلو کا یونہر کیا یہ کربلا میں بچوں کو بھی یہ کیا جاتا ہے اور بعد میں رباب کو لیا خیمے کے پیچھے گئے اے مومنین آپ نے کبھی یہ دیکھا ہے کہ باپ تلوار سے قبر کھوڑ رہا ہے بچے کو ڈالا وہاں ماں کھڑی ہے وہاں قبر کو بند کیا پانی بھی نہیں تھا کہ سبیل کرے وہاں وہاں پانی ڈالے قبر پہ امام بیٹھ کے روئے وہاں اور ایسے اسے راب کر لی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا امید تعلیمی سیعلم اللہ دین ظلم و علی بیت محمد نیم فلم ینقلبون انا لیلہ و انا الیہ راجعون الہی بحق محمد و انت المحمود الہی بحق علی و انت العلا الہی بحق فاطمہ و انت فاطر السماوات والارض الہی بحق الحسن و انت المحسن الہی بحق الحسین و انت قدیم الاحسان الہی بحق تسرت المحسومین من ضریات الحسن و الحسین علیہ السلام و اللہ اکسر دیس عباد اللہ فارس قرآن دثواب و دسمت بسم اللہ فادر قرآن دی مقلی سمانس المحسومین علیہ السلام فرگیو ہمی شورت کامینز Grant all those that have passed away, Magfira, all those that are sick, grant them Shifa, all those that are, that are distressed in whatever part of the world that they may be in, grant them quick relief from their distresses. 
Ya Allah has sent the appearance of our Imam and give us the tawfiq to recognize him and to be of assistance to him. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Muqallib al Kulu. Sabit Kalbi ala Dini, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Muqallib al Kulu. Sabit Kalbi ala Dini, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Muqallib al Kulu. Sabit Kalbi ala Dini, Rahim Allah, Mantara Surah Al Mubarak Al Fatiha.